So putting in an MDI or small volume nib, uh, make sure that you identify your inspiratory limb of the circuit. Looking at this circuit, I would look at this just based upon what I know about circuits. I would think this is the inspiratory limb. But if I trace that back, it goes to the expiratory side of this machine just because of whoever put it on. Uh, I don't say they put it on wrong because technically this is a dry circuit so it really doesn't matter if it was a wet circuit and you're truly putting your temperature probes in at that point it would matter um, but you do have an inspiratory limb and an expiratory limb and our purposes this is actually going to be the inspiratory limb because that's what's attached to the ventilator on the inspiratory side of the, uh, of the machine uh, when you're given an MDI, you've got to make sure that MDI or a neb, when you place this in line, you want to make sure that you put it on the actual inspiratory limb. You can place it between the Y and the patient, but you've got to be aware that you're increasing their dead space by that much more uh, volume if you happen to put that in after the HME. The reason you might put it in after the HME, this particular HME that we have in line there, gives you the opportunity to transition back and forth between aerosol and or leave it at your HME. Obviously, before you give the medication, you want to make sure you got that turned to aerosol so that it gives free passage of the uh, medication through that particular HME device. Not all HMEs are made equally. So this one has a rotary dial on it. You can switch between HME and aerosol. The majority of uh, HMEs out there are just a straight up a HME. So you got to take it out or make sure that you put stuff on this side, but if you're putting it on this side, that's gonna increase your dead space. And then if you're putting it back here and you don't have one of these kind of HMEs, you're breaking the circuit every time you put something in and out of it, and that's gonna predispose your patient to more um, infection risk. So just be careful, be aware of that kind of stuff. If you have these HMEs, utilize those HMEs. Um, all right, so now we'll go with putting the circuit in. You can put your ventilator in standby. What I typically always like to do is, instead of putting it in standby, I'll let it deliver a breath, I'll break it because I can put it in uh, relatively quickly. And anytime you're breaking a circuit with an HME, break behind the HME, just because there's gonna be moisture and condensation that develops here. So if I break the circuit right here, and I'm not paying attention to where, and I didn't put the ventilator in standby, you're gonna get sprayed as soon as it sends a, a breath out to you. So you're gonna break here instead of there. Even if you're, because the HMEs have to be changed like every 48 hours, that's gonna depend upon your hospital policy. But if I'm gonna go in and change out this HME, I'm not breaking the circuit here, I'm gonna break back here because any fluid that's sitting there, if I'm not putting the ventilator in standby to break the circuit, it's gonna fire a breath and then that's gonna spray and aerosolize everything that's right there. But if you break it here, then I could just put that on, take that HME out, and I didn't get sprayed with anything. And then be careful of that, because there's gonna be fluid, so if you're you know, flinging or throwing it across the room into the trash can, if you're trying to, you know, don't do that. Just put it, put it, put it aside. Put your uh, HME in line with the ventilator fire breath. Again, you can put it in standby if you like, but I feel comfortable enough doing that myself. So now we are in line. Depending upon the Y of your ventilator, you may or may not have enough room to get that in there. This one provides just enough room to get that in there. If we had a different Y and they were more parallel than coming off diagonally from each other, you might decide to put a piece of corrugated tubing in line just to give you a little bit more uh, wiggle room so that you can put place that in there. Your MDI canister, this happens to be, well, this is an old Provental canister that we have. You should clean the tip of that off with an alcohol prep, shake it up and down, mix the propellant and so forth. You don't necessarily have to warm these. This is an HFA inhaler. inhaler. Um, so now what you wanna do with the ventilator now this ventilator is not on just so that I can speak over it and you can hear pretty well with that, but you want to break this loose, coordinate with the ventilator, allow it to give a breath. After it fires a breath, you hit the inspiratory, depress the canister, hit the inspiratory hold button, and then with a gloved hand you can cover back up. You should shake in between each, um, to mix the repellent in between each actuation. You may get anywhere between two and four breaths. You go back in again, and I usually support underneath that with my hand 
so that I can let it give a breath. As it gives a breath, I depress the canister and inspiratory hold all at the same time. Well, not all at the same time. There's gonna be a slight difference by the time you depress the canister, then do your inspiratory hold so that the breath can go through there. Um, but you would do that. Now, to backtrack just a second. That's how you would give it. So if you were coming in to actually do a treatment on a patient, make sure you switch that over to aerosol before you do the treatment. That if you were not, if you didn't have that type of HME in there, then pull the HME out, give the treatment, and then put the HME back in afterward. But it's got to absolutely be switched over to aerosol uh, before you give any medication to anybody. That's the HME. If we're going to do the small volume neb, take that out. And you've got your spring-loaded neb T in there. With the spring-loaded neb T, again, you'll turn that to aerosol. Take your neb cup, put it in line at the neb T with whatever solution of medication you're going to be administering to the patient. Make sure that, that you can utilize the vent arm, but that needs to remain perpendicular to the floor so that it can actually nebulize. With this ventilator, it's got a nipple adapter so that you can actually attach it here and then just hit the nebulizer button and it will nebulize every time it delivers a breath to the patient. That's gonna run for about 15 minutes and then um, the treatment will be done. After you're finished with that, the green LED light that lights up here by nebulizer will go off. Then you just come in here, disconnect and cap that back and that spring-loaded valve seats down so that you don't have any volume lost up, so you can leave the neb T in that way you're just putting your neb in and out. And then make sure after you're done, switch that back over to, air, uh, to HME. And that's it.